Okay, hello everyone and thanks for joining on today's video and today I have Miss Whitney Will. She is the owner and operator of Roaring Gardens, a small organic farm here in Carbondale, Colorado. And today's subject is about organic versus conventional food and why it's important to buy organic and eat organic and all of that kind of good stuff. So thanks for joining today, Whitney. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you could just let me know what your thoughts are on organic food. Yeah, so I think, you know, kind of big picture wise, it's a difference in how we're treating the land in a systemic way. So, I mean, I guess one of the ways to approach it is why, how our food system became, how normal became conventional, became non-organic. So that was about how to get the most biggest produce in the easiest way. And so the way that we're going to do that is to, um, to work on the things that keep the plants smaller or make growing problematic. So one of those things are going to be pests. So that goes from anything from mice and rodents um, in the gardens to bugs. So pesticides were sprayed to kill the bugs. And often what happens is that those pesticides are sprayed on the plants. And so if you spray poison on the plants, the bugs will stop eating them or they will die when they eat them and you're limiting the, the pests, but you are also spraying poison on our food crops. Okay. So that's one of the reasons. Another, another way that things become, that growing is not organic is in weed pressure. So that we're going to have, you know, our food plants, which we want to grow them to be tender and delicious and not these like tough um, plants that can handle that, we're going to breed our, our food crops to be more tender and the weeds um, are successful because they're very resilient. So then we're going to develop herbicides to spray on the weeds to kill the plant matter of the weeds. Okay. Um, now another way to combat both of these problems is to make the plants grow as fast as they possibly can and that's where we come in with chemical fertilizers. So there's kind of three components in terms of what we're spraying on the plants as far as killing off the weeds and killing off the pests and what we're putting in our soils to make the plants grow as fast and as big um, as we possibly can. So my farm is organic, but overall in our food system, mm -hmm. conventional became inorganic for those reasons. Okay. Just because of money and time and because all of, of money that kind of and stuff. time, and then also we found in developing our food system, and again this is our country. I don't know how to say this. Um, that it's much simpler if you can grow an acre of spinach or an acre of broccoli and not a row next to a row of something else because it makes it much simpler for seeding and harvesting and weeding and if you're going to fertilize it when you're going to fertilize it so then when we have an acre of one crop that's kind of becomes a target for pests and it's also if you have an acre of broccoli that whole acre is pulling the same nutrients out of the soil gotcha okay so it's very exploitative but it's also creating the problems and then we're using um, more pesticides and more fertilizers to replenish the nutrients that our monocrops are taking out and to kill the bugs that are being attracted because we have a huge concentration of one kind of crop. Okay, and so, you know, I know that certification and labels and things like that, it's got to be an expensive endeavor. And so I know that a lot of these small, so you say small mom and pop farms are, you know, that really can't, you know, justify paying the, the label price for 100% organic. Is that is that a lo true in a lot of cases or? Well, I think one thing, I think the most important thing in terms of organic certification is really, if we're talking about these small farms that are really integrated into a community. Mm -hmm. So like my farm, most of our, um, most of our business comes from our CSA program where okay. our customers are coming to the farm to pick up our produce and at the farmer's market where I have face-to-face -face interactions with my customers. And I think that's really, 
more important uh, for us is that you know your farmers and you trust your farmers. Because okay. I'm not selling to Whole Foods and I don't have a few acres and I'm not, um, I don't have thousands of pounds of produce that we're distributing to different grocery stores, um, the organic label is less important. Okay. And it would be worth it if we were kind of trafficking in that large of quantities but because it's all face to face and people can come to our farm and they can talk to us we just decided you know however many hours of documentation it takes and the money it takes um, was really just not appropriate to our business model and I think mm -hmm. a lot of other small farms um, have that idea as well I think one other thing that was really important to me is that if I'm organic certified I can't trade tomato plants with the other local farm down the street unless they're organic certified and so it became this way of breaking apart our local farming community rather than something that was fostering it so okay. none of the local farms at our size um, are organic certified and it means that we can work together and support each other oh that's cool so probably the best thing to do is to find a local small farm in your area such as a CSA which means community supported agriculture mm -hmm. right and so finding a CSA in your area and then getting to know their practices are they organic or maybe they just have good you know good farming practices mm -hmm. they're not using chemical herbicides pesticides mm -hmm. fungicides things like that and then supporting that local farmer and that's one of the best way to support our food system mm -hmm. is that is that and also to learn about food because your farmer is going to know about everything that they're growing and they're going to know how to cook it and they're going to know how to use it so you actually have a tremendous resource in building a relationship with your okay. farmer um, but knowing that as well but then again in the grocery stores right I do think when I'm shopping from city market or shopping from Whole Foods or wherever looking for that organic certification from larger distributors and that's not going to be perfect because mm -hmm. within the certification you can use some fertilizers and herbicides and pesticides that are organic certified but maybe not as pure as we like to think they are okay and so I think educating yourself about that and deciding what's really important for you and then talking to your farmers and all the farmers I know are very happy to say like yes, this is what I use on my plants, this is the kind of fertilizer, it's organic because of this, and um, okay. and also discussing the compromises we make, you know, okay. like, um, I think also having an awareness of the dirty dozen, mm -hmm. of the plants that have the most pesticides on them, okay, um, is a really good way to balance that, because then, again, organic is more expensive, unfortunately, and hopefully, in my lifetime, we can redo the food system so that um, so that our government is subsidizing small farmers and healthier ways of eating. But until that happens, you do have to make choices and compromises, both as a farmer sure. and the consumer. Okay. And I also, what a lot of people I think don't realize is that organic goes into our meat source as well. So mm -hmm. isn't it true that like, an, if, if you're buying beef that's organic, they're actually, the food that they eat doesn't, isn't treated with pesticides yeah. and herbicides and things like that chemicals so that their meat or you know what they bring to our body isn't contaminated as well is that true yeah and the meat also is not they're not allowed to receive any kind of antibiotics or anything in organic meat okay. as well which is really interesting a lot of farmers that raise organic meat you know if a calf gets sick they can't medicate it and then grow it um, and harvest it so they will you know they're not going to let the calf die so they do medicate it and then it, they sell it to a conventional farm oh, okay and um and then i guess organic ranchers aren't allowed to call their product organic if they're feeding gmo feeds as well right, right. okay all right right well, cool. so that's all in there and so the organic program it's a lot of paperwork in terms of you know i have to in terms of what that looks like in vegetables is i have to be able to trace this broccoli head to where it was planted in the garden, everything that happened to it from seeding um, to when it was transplanted into the garden, even the seed lot and the seed company that has to be certified organic. Okay. Well, cool.
Cool. Well, thanks so much, Whitney, for joining me. And uh, if you have any questions or want to know more about Whitney's Farm, uh, it's Roaring Gardens. This is Dr. Amy Denick, and thanks for joining with CoreFlex Chiropractic. And next time we will have another video about poo. Yes, I said it. It's poo. So get ready to laugh and have a good time. And we'll see you next time. Thanks.